The Get Rich Slow Club podcast is a collaboration between Tash Etchman from Tash Invest and Anna Christina from Perla. The Get Rich Slow Club acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land we record on. From coast to coast, across land, waters and communities, we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Any advice is general and does not consider your financial situation, needs or objectives. So consider whether it's appropriate for you. Welcome to the Get Rich Slow Club podcast, where we take you from beginner to confident investor, where we can teach you everything you need to know about investing. So come get rich slow with us. Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about automating your finances and investments. We'll explain what it is, why you should, and then how to actually do it. But before we get started, let's share our money wins and money losses of the week. Oh, I'll go first. <laughs> this this seems really lame, but I bought bulk meat and made meatballs and froze a whole bunch of them and had leftovers for two days. And some people are anti leftovers, but it makes my life so much easier with a family of four. And it was a huge win because it was really cheap. And it was the first time I made meatballs. I didn't, the I've first never time made, you've meatballs. Ever made meatballs. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's a new recipe that I have as well. But I find that making food is so stressful for our family and um, anything I can do to minimize it is a huge win. But then also the fact that I did this quite cheaply was a huge money win as well. I've been loving all the grocery, the grocery wins. Aldi, Woolies, now run to Maples. I love the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Tash? Uh, my food one, I guess, is my mom's visiting at the moment. So she's been buying ingredients and making dinner. That's been very exciting having her here. And also the entertainment book was on sale for 99 cents the other day, which I love because they've got so many different discounts and vouchers in there. So getting it for just under a dollar was amazing. A uh, funny note, when I was in high school, we would sell entertainment books to raise money for our high school. I don't know if that's a thing yeah, here in Australia. Yeah, we did that yeah. as is well. It? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now they just have the app. So you can just pick the city you want on the app, which is great. That's great. Yeah. Because no one wants a physical book that you, yeah. you know, put in your car or lug around. I remember with my family, we used to like separate them into little Ziploc bags and you kind of have to go through the Ziploc bag to find the one that you wanted. Oh, so time consuming. Yes. But man, the things you did to get a cheaper deal. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back to automating our finances. Anna, do you automate any of yours? I do. I automate my credit card payment which um, I found that when I first set that up, I had to jump through a lot of hoops. The banks made it really not easy to automate that, I think on purpose, because Mm -hmm. they make money if you don't make a payment. I feel that as well. Yeah, so I have that automated. Um, my, My mortgage payments are weekly, and that's obviously automatic. All my bills are automated except for my water bill. I just haven't gotten to it, so... I have to remember to pay that. And um, and then I also invest usually as well. It's a little bit paused now that I'm on parental leave, but that's that's another thing I automate. What about you? Yeah, I automate my investing as well. I have paused it too because I just paid my massive tax bill and I want to build up my savings buffer a little bit more. Um, I also found that with my credit card too. So I have an Amex, which is really easy to automate, but I also have a Westpac card. And because I don't bank mainly using Westpac, it's a bit of a mission to transfer between banks and then pay off my credit card. But I'm definitely going to work on that one. I also found that Amex makes it really easy um, to to automate, which which is awesome. I have an Amex as well. So that's that's automated. Yeah, because they're a little bit more expensive in terms of fees, but I just find their customer service and their features so much better and so much like handier almost. And I've also automated my mortgage payments as well. They're a direct debit every week too. Lovely. So we're going to talk a little bit more about automating our investments, but before we do, we want to talk about the set and forget strategy. We talk about this in depth in episode three, but we'll do a little bit of a reminder right now. In 2023, Fidelity did a study where they found that their best investors were either dead or inactive, proving that the set and forget strategy actually does work. I know, Tash, this is one of your favorite studies. And I love it. It is mine as well. <laughs> So again, buy and hold investing is a likely win over the long term. So what exactly is the set and forget strategy? It's a strategy that allows you to automate your investment decisions, removing the need for constant monitoring, emotional decisions, and time-consuming analysis. By setting up automatic contributions for your investments, you can put your investing on autopilot, freeing up your time and your mental energy. This also reduces the need and desire to tinker with your investments. What do you mean by tinkering with your investments? (laughs) Tinkering is such a good word. Um, It's so accurate. (laughs) It exactly is. It means being swayed by thematic ETFs. So ETFs that invest in a specific theme or trend. Sometimes you hear this around renewable energy, tech, crypto. 
the thing is, it's easy to be distracted, especially around cheaper brokerage fees or if you're looking for a better ETF, whatever that means. Um, yeah, yes. that's what tinkering. <laughs> Stop trying to fix things that aren't broken. Yeah, the benefit of the set and forget strategy is that it allows you to dollar cost average into the market. Dollar cost averaging is investing a fixed amount of money at regular intervals, regardless of the price of the investment. By doing this, you're able to buy more shares when the price is low and fewer shares when the price is high, which can help to reduce the impact of volatility on your portfolio. I know that we are both dollar cost averaging fans. Has that always been your strategy? No. In <laughs> fact, I actually did a, a lump sum the first time I actually started investing. So, And then I left it. I really did leave it. It was, it was definitely a set and forget. <laughs> I just kind of uh, purchased a whole bunch of ETFs and just waited to see how I felt about investing and got comfortable with the whole process. That was the first time I, I invested. What about you? Yeah, I did the same. So I just put in like a few thousand dollars initially and just let it be. I only started automating my investing around 2020. And that was after a few years of randomly investing. But I was automating my savings and other parts of my finances previously. Oh, interesting. You said around 2020. I think I started around 2016. And I remember my coworkers were watching the whole Trump election closely and they wanted to make some money off of it. They were looking to like short the market and they were expecting it to be quite volatile at that time. And uh, yeah, I remember doing a you know lump sum, putting my money in the market and just watching because it was a large amount at that time. I think it was around 10K or so. And I was just like, mm. oh, what's going to happen? It's my first time investing. That's and a meanwhile, lot. My, yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, my coworkers are talking about you know wanting to make money off of the Trump election. So yeah, what they were doing is often referred to as shorting the market. Short selling is when an investor borrows a share, sells it, and then expects to buy it back for less money. It's when someone banks on market fluctuations to make a quick profit. This is an advanced strategy though, and we don't promote it for everyday investors. So why should you automate your investing? So there's a few reasons why you should consider automating. One of the main benefits is consistency. By setting up a reoccurring contribution, you ensure that you are constantly allocating funds towards your investment portfolio. Again, this is using the dollar cost averaging strategy. And another way to look at this is that you're building a habit, which is instrumental to being a good long-term investor. Any book on money psychology will talk about the benefit of habits when it comes to money. The next one is emotional discipline. Investing can be an emotional roller coaster. It's easy to get swayed by short-term market fluctuations and make impulsive decisions based on fear or greed. Automating your investing helps remove the emotional aspect. Make an investing plan and stick to it, regardless of what the market is doing. This disciplined approach can prevent you from making costly mistakes driven by emotions and keep you focused on your long-term goals. And it's not to be understated because the emotional side is a huge part it's of huge. investing. Yeah. It's like most of it. It's crazy. Yeah. The third reason is having time efficiency. We all live bu- busy lives and managing investments can be super time consuming. Researching investment options, monitoring the market, making frequent adjustments can all take up a significant amount of valuable time. So by automating your investments, you reduce the need for constant monitoring and intervention and tinkering. And this allows for you to focus on other aspects of your life while your money continues to work for you in the background. All sounds pretty great, doesn't it? Now let's talk about how you can actually automate your investments. There are three main brokers in Australia that have auto invest features, Comsec Pocket, Vanguard Personal Investor, and Perla. Brokers update offers all the time though, so head to their websites to find the current info. So let's kick it off with Vanguard Personal Investor. It's a free brokerage to buy Vanguard ETFs and it's $9 to sell. The minimum initial investment is $500 and it's $200 if you want to auto invest. This is not chess sponsored. And we talk more about this in our previous episode. Next, we have Comsec Pocket. There are only seven ETFs to choose from. And the brokerage is $2 up to a $1,000 investment. There is a minimum investment amount of $50, but I would recommend investing more each time to make the brokerage worth it. It's a good idea generally to keep fees under 1%, ideally less. So if you're paying $2 in brokerage fees, it's a good idea to invest at least $200. Comsec Pocket is chess sponsored and we spoke about that more in episode four. And the third broker is Perler. Perler offers two products, Shares and Micro. Shares are chess sponsored and you can automate with a minimum of 650 initially. You will pay a brokerage fee depending on how many different shares you purchase. And again, this is chess sponsored. It's 650 per transaction or 550 prepaid. There's also the Micro product, which you can invest as little as $5. This option is not chess sponsored. It's free up to $100. And after that, it's either 
$1.70 a month or $2.30 a month, depending on how many funds you hold. We'll just talk about the share product option right now. There are three main options for auto investing. The first one is called lower share. You can invest in the ETF that is the furthest from the target percentage you've allocated to it. This option applies only one brokerage fee per transaction. When I talk about the percentage you allocate, this is something you can do on the platform when you adjust your portfolio targets when you set up auto invest. You can do this from the dashboard by clicking on the target. This is the most popular option with 97% of users choosing this, including me. Do you choose this one as well, Anna? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is also what I use, yeah. The second option is rebalance your portfolio. This option rebalances your portfolio to the target percentage you've allocated for each ETF, which Tash just talked about. So you end up purchasing across all the ETFs in your target portfolio. You will be charged more than one brokerage if you have more than one ETF in your target portfolio. And this option works for someone who potentially invests less frequently or has a large sum of money they want to distribute across ETFs. 2% of users choose this option. The next one is Equal Invest, which allows you to invest across your portfolio. For example, if you invest $500 a week and you have four ETFs in your target portfolio, it will invest 125 into each. You'll pay a brokerage fee for each ETF, so this again is only recommended for larger investment amounts. Only 1% of users choose this option. Now we have some questions from our Instagram Q&A. If you want your questions answered in future episodes, then keep an eye out on the Get Rich Slow Club Instagram. The first question, are there normally greater fees related to automating your investments? So overall, the brokerage fee should be the same whether you are manually investing or auto investing. I know for Perler, the fee doesn't change for auto invest. However, if you do choose an option to auto invest in multiple shares, which we just talked about, or ETFs, you will be charged a brokerage for each of these. Uh, so for example, if you choose three ETFs, you will be charged for three brokerage fees. The next question from our community is, do you always buy the same ETF? How do you know when it's time to change ETFs? Very good question. Um, I have four ETFs in my auto invest portfolio and I just buy one each time. Whether or not you buy the same ETF or multiple depends on what the ETF itself invests in and your overall investing strategy. For example, I have an international ETF, an Australian ETF, an emerging markets ETF, and a small companies index ETF. Um, you should go back and have a listen to episode three, where we spoke more about asset allocation if you want to learn more. Yeah, and on Perler, it depends on how your target portfolio is set up. Usually the ETFs that's furthest from your target will be purchased in order to be aligned with your target portfolio. And sometimes that same ETF can be further from your portfolio when it's time to auto invest, in which case you may be purchasing the same ETF multiple times in a row until it's closer to that target. This happens automatically when you pick the lowest share auto invest option. So don't be alarmed if you're wondering why the same ETF is being purchased. It's just slightly off from your target and is trying to catch up. Yeah. And especially if you've got different percentages allocated, like I know with my international ETF, a large part of my portfolio is allocated to that. Whereas the emerging markets one, I think is only like 7%. So it'll often buy the international ETF more than some of the other smaller ones. What's our action of the week? Oh, great question. Go and automate one of your finances. So whether it's a credit card bill or investing strategy or just your bills, your water bill. Or I'll your tell, savings. I'll, yeah. Yes, or your savings. Bill. Yes. Any of those, just go and automate one thing. It's yes. just really important to do that. I'm going to set a goal to go and automate my Westpac credit card so we can see next week if I've done that one. Hopefully. Try and keep myself accountable. And I'll go and try to automate my water bill. Awesome. So until next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. If you found this episode helpful, please rate us five stars, write a review, or share with a friend. If you're new to investing, make sure to listen to our first 10 episodes. Follow us at Get Rich Slow Club or Tash at Tash Invest or me at Anna Christina. This show was brought to you by Natasha Edgman, who is an authorized representative, 12-99881 of Guideway Financial Services, AFSL 420367, and Perla, who is an authorized representative, 128-1540 of Sanlam Private Wealth, AFSL 337927. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to investing. So make sure you check out our financial services guides and read the product disclosure statement and target market determination for any investments you're considering. See our show notes for more info.